Hello, Art of Passion and Intimacy. This is Violet Lang, and I'm the founder of The Pleasure Path, and I'm the host of this group, The Art of Passion and Intimacy, and I am so excited to be talking with you tonight about this idea of the one. <laughs> so there are so many people who talk about the one, whether he's the one, um, whether it's their soulmate, and I'm just really curious if you've ever felt that you had met someone that you thought was the one. Um, and if so, maybe type it in the chat box or put a like or a heart. Uh, I myself have had many instances, probably too many to count, where I thought someone was the one. And what I meant by that is like I could see myself already painting a picture of the future with this person before I even knew them, <laughs> which when you verbalize sounds kind of funny, but when you're in the moment, it feels so natural. So. If you've ever like visualized the house you would live in together, or what your wedding would look like, or how it would feel on you know this honeymoon or vacation, like part of being a human being is living into the future and daydreaming and feeling into all the possibilities. So that's a beautiful, beautiful, amazing part of being a woman and being a human being. But so many times when we tell ourselves that a person is the one, it knocks us out of reality. It's just putting us straight into the future and we're making decisions purely based on hormones and based on ideas and fantasy. And so whenever I thought that someone was the one, I missed a lot of warning signs. So one of the guys that I thought was the one was a guy who lived in Turks and Caicos, which was really romantic and really cool. Um, but turns out he never wanted to get married. He never wanted to have an exclusive relationship. He was really just like a partier and a playboy. But I just assumed since we really both liked each other and had passion that of course, like it was going to turn into a relationship. So there's nothing wrong with thinking that someone is amazing, but when we start to collapse our world and when we start to condense all of our options and possibilities into just one person that hasn't even shown their true colors yet, then yikes, that can be really hairy and really scary. So if you've ever found yourself thinking, oh my gosh, he's the one, and then it's fizzled out, you are not alone. Like I have been there a million times and so many women have been there too. So what's up with that and why is it a problem? So one of the reasons it's a problem is because you might not pay attention to the red flags or the clues or the signs, which was my example from earlier. Another reason it's a problem is that it might actually have you focusing on the wrong person, someone who seems to have some of the qualities but could actually just be a reenactment of the past, like the same sort of type of guy that you're attracted to or the same sort of aspects of someone. Maybe he's emotionally unavailable and your dad was that way. Or maybe he's kind of flirtatious with a lot of women and you never felt like you were good enough or your first boyfriend cheated on you or one of those things. So when we think that someone is the one, sometimes it's just our subconscious looking to the other person to heal an aspect of ourselves and creating a reenactment. But the other problem with thinking that someone is the one, especially too early, is that it narrows your world and that you might not see all these other amazing possibilities. So I bet right now there are like 10 guys that would love to date you, love to get to know you, love to spend time with you, love to just be in your presence as a embodiment of the goddess that you are. Men oftentimes really just like being in a woman's company, not only because she's sexy, not only because of all those things, but because we add so much to a man's life that he doesn't get necessarily from the other places in his life. So if you're focused on just one person, then you might miss out on all of these other guys who really have a lot to offer and who really are interested in you as you are versus chasing someone who might be the one. So for me, when I thought someone was the one, it evoked this sense of like hunger and almost like a chase. Like I had to prove to myself that I was right. It's almost like my mind had decided this is my person and it created this fantasy and then I was attached to that outcome and I was attached to proving myself. So even when things got a little bit rocky, I had a hard time letting go because I had already decided and already like claimed this as my outcome instead of really going with the flow, trusting my body and staying connected to myself. So there are big problems of thinking that someone is the one, but there's also a lot of benefits because then we get to like have this fantasy relationship and that fantasy relationship is like a drug. It can be hard to let go of and, and I'm not blaming you. I'm not shaming you. Um, but what I would love to encourage you to do is to have a vision that exists beyond just one person. Because even if you meet the most amazing person and you get married, your vision will be something that you will grow into. So we don't arrive perfectly as human beings. We 
we go through our life always learning and always growing. And the same thing with our partners, they're always learning and always growing. So when you have a vision for yourself and for your relationship, it's something to live into and to stretch into versus expecting something to just be like set up right away or to happen just in your mind. So stay connected to your vision beyond just one person and stay connected to the biggest vision possible, whether it's with someone that you're dating or whether it's with someone you're even married to. So oftentimes, oftentimes when something kind of fizzles out, we put too much pressure on it. We decide that they're the one, the guy starts to starts to pull back and we start to forget that we have all these other options, not just in our relationships, but in our life. So I don't believe that life is just linear, that it's like point A to point B to point C. I think it's more chaotic than that. I think that we have choice every moment when we make a decision and that impacts the rest of our life, but it's not necessarily linear. It can go in a spiral or it can go in all these different directions. So when we narrow our options to just one person, not only does it make it more pressured and more likely to fizzle out, but we forget not only the great men that are out there, but all of the various opportunities for our life, whether that means living other places, traveling other places, being with a partner that you start a business with or that you do um, some sort of project with or art project or community event. So I love to think about all the possibilities and I want you to be with a partner whose view of possibilities is similar to the view of your possibilities. You may, maybe can't predict your future with one person and you maybe can't predict your future even just by yourself, but I want you to align with someone whose life vision matches your life vision. How do you find that out, like on a first date? Maybe you can't tell on the first date, but you can normally tell what people's values are by the way they talk, by the things they get excited about, by the things that have been challenging and how they've learned and grown from those. And those are absolutely things that can come out on a second, third, fourth, fifth date, and things that you can't tell right away. So we want chemistry, but we also want connection. And I personally believe that the connection is about 80% of it and the chemistry is about 20% of it. If we just go for chemistry or just go for this idea of like the one, then uh, sometimes we can lead ourselves astray. Uh, I believe that we have many, many loving connections through our life. And some of those loving connections are going to be stronger than others. And some are going to be so strong that it's undeniable that we want to be with this person forever. But it's typically not a decision that we make right away. It's a decision that we grow into over time as we get to know the person. So Jason is my husband that I'm absolutely over the moon in love with. And I do believe that he is my person, but I don't know that I can say like he's the one because I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of my life. Like what if I die when I'm 60? I would want him to be able to get remarried and have a kicking like last 30 years of his life. So uh, not to be all doom and gloom, but I just want us to focus, especially this time of year, on possibility and potential and know that we don't live in a linear universe and that there's so many openings and so many possibilities and you maintain your power more when you don't give someone else the, the title of being the one. Um, when you allow yourself to be your own one, not because you're supposed to be single, but because when you notice that yourself are the most important person in your life, then you can start acting accordingly and taking care of yourself and honoring yourself and seeking someone who who also has a similar high value and a high vibe. So if you have any questions about this, I'd love to hear your comments. Or if you've ever been in a situation where you thought someone was the one and then they fizzled out, um, feel free to share. I could go on and on. I shared the one about the Turks and Caicos guy, but there were plenty. And uh, the funny thing is, is I'm thinking of, of a few different guys that I had thought, oh my gosh, he's the one. And I had started visualizing what would it look like to be like standing outside our house with our family and all these things. I have a very active imagination. And all of those guys, I look back and think, Oh my gosh, I'm really glad that didn't work out either because like the Turks and Caicos guy um, never actually wanted a monogamous relationship. Um, the other guy uh, definitely smoked a lot of pot, which I didn't realize at first when we started dating. And then I found out later and then I just think, thank goodness that it didn't work out. Um, another guy, well, I don't need to go through my whole history, but to make a long story short, there's no one in my past that I thought was the one that I'm, that I wish like, oh, I wish they would have stayed or it was the one that got away. Um, even Jason throughout our whole courting process, I never thought like, he's the one we have this amazing love story where I met him in a dream. Like I had a dream about him before I actually met him in person three weeks later at a meetup event. So I, we have this cosmic, amazing, amazing love story. 
but I don't want to fall into the fallacy of him being the one, not that I have any intention on ever leaving the marriage or him, him ever leaving the marriage. But I just think that when we put the mantle of the one on someone, it puts so much responsibility on them that might not actually be fair and might not actually be true. So keep choosing yourself, keep letting yourself be the one in your life and find someone who also values themselves to that high degree and see what sort of magic you can create together when you have a vision that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and better and better from you both doing your own work on yourself and both working on the relationship. So if you've ever had the experience of it fizzling out or you get stuck in your head or maybe start to get anxious or get too uh, too far ahead of yourself, don't worry, we've all been there. Um, but I would love to connect with you and help you better understand how to stay present and connected to yourself, to be in your feminine, to be in a place of interdependence with a potential partner versus putting pressure on them. And so we have breakthrough sessions that we offer which are cool, free, 45 minute calls where we go deep into what's happening in your love life, what might be getting in your way, and also what is that vision that you want, and which sort of partner will fit best in that vision so you know what to look for and not get distracted by things that might just be reenactments or your mind telling you that that someone is the one. So I'll put a link into the comments and you can book that book your call through there. Um, again, this is Violet. I'm super excited to connect with you. I always love these Wednesday Facebook Lives. If there's a topic that we haven't covered that you want us to cover, then just write it in and we will address that next week. All right, lots of love to you. Stay committed to yourself. Know that you are the one. Don't get too far ahead of yourself with, uh, with the guys that you date. And uh, yeah, have fun this week. <laughs> Bye.